This week, I'm revisiting one of the first tutorials I ever made here on YouTube. It was a video that's all about ways of learning how to tap center. And, well, looking back, that video is not great. The voiceover is a bit lifeless. And in the interim, I've thought a lot about tap centering and good ways of trying to teach it, as it is fundamentally quite a tricky skill to learn. And I think that some of the techniques online either don't really tell you how to do it or they overcomplicate it. And so in this video, I'm going to try and cover everything from where to tap, the speed of the wheel, good ways of practicing, how to learn through touch and through sight and all manner of other things. But to begin with, I thought I'd quickly discuss what tap centering is and why it's useful. And by the visuals, you should already be able to guess that it's the process of tapping the pot so that it spins in the very middle of the wheel. Now there are other ways of centering pots, but most of them require you stopping the wheel, pushing the pot in the right direction, stopping it again, and so on, until it's centered. But with tap centering, you never stop the wheel. And with time and practice, it becomes an incredibly efficient technique. And if you are somebody that's planning on making hundreds and hundreds of pots, if you can save 10 or 20 seconds on each piece you make when you're centering it for trimming, in the long run, this adds up to a lot of time. But it's also important to consider that being able to tap center doesn't make you a better potter. It doesn't make the pots themselves better. It's just a technique that can be used to really streamline your making process. It's often described as a skill that's similar to learning how to ride a bike, as it's something that can just sort of click as you're practicing. But if you are trying to learn this technique, somebody saying that isn't all that helpful. And so in this tutorial, I'm going to really try and break each step down. And hopefully there's some nugget of information in here that will make tap centering click for you. Lastly, as a potter who makes many multiples of the same thing, say mugs or bowls, I really can't imagine making pots without knowing this skill. It's completely ingrained in me. It's subconscious and I find myself using it all the time when I'm trimming pots, waxing them like this and even glazing. It's just so useful and it's something that I recommend to all potters who are serious about doing this for a living. So let's get started. I'll begin by just discussing the fundamentals. Essentially, the pot is placed down onto the wheel head and spun at a medium speed. I then strike the vessel from one side in a rhythmic pattern, but don't get hung up on that until it comes to sit right in the middle of the wheel. I happen to use my right hand to do this, whereas many other potters use their left hand, striking the pot from the other side, which I just cannot do. So one of the first things you have to figure out is which side feels more comfortable for you. There is an argument for using your left hand, as it means you can hold your turning tools in your right hand, so you aren't constantly having to pick them up and put them down. But I'm right-handed, and tap centering with my right hand is just what's always felt comfortable. So initially, I suggest switching between the two, tapping from the right, and the left until you figure out what feels comfortable. Most people will have a preference, even if they don't realize it. So figure out what feels best and stick with that. Now, the first thing that's really helpful to discuss are the lines on your wheel head. Most potter's wheels should have these, but if you don't, you can use a Sharpie like this to draw them on. In fact, if you're learning how to tap center, it could be beneficial having more of these on your wheel head as these concentric circles essentially act like visual guides. And these, perhaps more than anything, are what I use to tell if the pot is centered or not. I don't have to touch the pot to know that it's centered. I can see that it's centered. And this is how. If I place the bowl down seemingly at random, there's a good chance it will be sitting off to one side slightly. And I can see that here if I use one of these rings as a guide. The bowl is closer to it on one side than it is the other. So in theory, I can center visually by moving the bowl so that the gap between the rim and one of the rings is even all the way around. And when I'm centering, this is what I'm looking for. I tap the pot and I watch how the rim spins in relation to the rings on the wheel head. If it's massively off center, you'll be able to see it visually. And if you want, you can just stop the wheel, move it into the center, and the pot is now in the correct place to be trimmed. But if you want to be faster and never stop the wheel, that's when you can begin tapping. And so if I place it off center, the moment that I tap with my right hand at about three o'clock is when the piece is the closest to my hand, when it's most off center. And as I tap, I watch the gap between the pot's rim and the lines on the wheel head. And when the gap spins evenly all the way around, I know that it's centered. So I don't tap when the pot is furthest away, but when it's close. And with each tap, as the pot spins round and round, it's moved closer to the center. 
Now there is a bit of a paradox here, or a conflict rather, as tap centering is fundamentally easier if your pots are thrown well. If the walls are even from top to bottom and the rim is more or less perfectly round, you'll have a much easier time learning how to tap center, as visually if something's off it's obvious. So, here's my best attempt at throwing a beginner's pot. The rim is slightly oval and the walls undulate, and if I rest my fingers on it you can see that they bounce all over the place. Now, if you're learning to tap centre with a pot like this, it's simply going to be more difficult as you can't physically centre the rim perfectly, but even a pot that's thrown off centre and is a bit wobbly will have a point where it spins most centrally on its axis, and so it's that point you have to find. In this case, whilst the rim and the walls are all over the place, the base looks far more steady and even, so that's the point I'm going to centre, and as I can't use the rings on the wheel head to help me very much up here, I'll instead use my finger as a guide at the top. So I spin the pot and I hold my finger stationary close to the base of the pot. And just like the rings on the wheel head, at some point it will be closer to my finger than at other points. And so I can then remove my finger, tap centre it, and then test with my finger again. And what I'm aiming for is for the bowl to be spinning around and making contact with my stationary fingertip the entire time. That's when I know it's centred. If the pot you've made is even wobblier than this, I don't think tap centering is a skill you should be trying to acquire just yet, as tap centering pots that have been thrown wildly off centre can be a nightmare, and so you should focus your efforts on throwing even pots first. Pots that look a bit more like what's on the left. They don't have to be this neat and perfect, but you will have a much easier time learning how to tap centre if they more closely resemble this. You don't necessarily need it to be even on the rim, waist, and foot, but as long as it's 70% there, you'll have a much more straightforward time learning. Now, moving on, I think it's important to discuss when I tap the pot as it spins around and how I tap it. As for when I strike the bowl, I tend to tap it when it's coming into my palm. And I always tap it at the same point, which for me is at about 3 o'clock. So if you take your wheel and divide it into 12 o'clock at the top, 3 on the right, six at the bottom, and nine on the left. For me, it's at three o'clock that I hit the pot, and it's always at this point that I tap. I don't suddenly move my hand to six o'clock or 12 o'clock. Instead, I stay consistently at three. And if you're working with your left hand, you're likely going to be striking it at nine o'clock. So if you disregard the spinning numbers on top of the bowl at this point and follow the arrow, instead, my hand remains in this position, tapping at three o'clock until it's centered. So, taken off centre, the bowl is tapped on every rotation at 3 o'clock when it's closest to my hand, and I'm carefully watching the rim and the gap between the rim and the circle on the wheel head. And when that gap is even all the way around, I know that the pot is centred. And it's the same with a simple cylinder like this. I tap the vessel with my right hand at 3 o'clock until the gap between the circle and the rim is the same. If you are having trouble with this, there is a way to use your thumb like a guide without stopping the wheel. If you extend the thumb of your left hand and wait until the cup brushes against it, my aim here is to essentially tap the pot whenever my thumb isn't making contact with it, until I get to the point that it's making contact the entire time. So if I shove it off centre, I spin the cup, and when I don't feel that it's making contact, that's when I tap it, and I watch right where my thumb meets the cup, and if there is a gap that comes around as the piece spins, I know that it's not centred, but essentially all I'm doing here is using my thumb as a guide as opposed to the lines on the wheel head, and some of you might find that it's easier to gauge whether it's centred by touch, so by using the thumb of your left hand, whereas some of you will find it easier to gauge when it's centred visually by how the rim of the pot spins in relation to the lines. And just like before, you can move your thumb to whichever part you want to centre. It's held stationary and I wait for the pot to make contact. Then, as soon as the bowl breaks contact, that's when I tap it. And as you push it closer to centre, your thumb will begin to make contact for longer. And that is when it's centred. Now, arguably, I would say using your thumb like this is sort of like using training wheels on a bike. It's fundamentally, you can use the hand that you're tapping the pot with to sense through touch when you make contact with it, how off or on centre it is, and when you no longer become reliant on a thumb or a finger, you can begin to use your other hand, my left hand in this case, in a better, more useful way. Often beginners will try and tap centre with just one hand, hitting it zealously, sending the piece skittering across the wheel head, and so a better use for this hand is to place it on top of the vessel, and to apply light downward pressure with it. This way, 
As you tap, you can begin to pin the pot in place as it approaches center. I begin by barely pressing down, and then as I see it approach the middle, I push down harder and harder. This way I can still strike quite firmly without the bowl overshooting and becoming off-centered again. Here I am centering without a finger, the cup sometimes scooting over a bit too far, whereas with a hand on top, pushing down, I can still strike firmly, but I'm now more accurate. As again, as soon as I see that the pot is spinning centrally, I can push down hard, trapping it on center really quickly. Now, for the most part, I tend to use the tops of my fingers to tap. I hit with my fingers slightly cupped, and you will also sometimes notice that I do a flurry of much smaller taps when the pot is more or less centered. Now, the reason I do this is because when the pot is more or less completely centered, it can be quite difficult to identify which side of the pot is most off-centered. So instead, I tend to tap the pot very lightly, very quickly, shifting it about by a few millimeters. And when I see that it's totally on center, I will push down firmly with my left hand to secure the most centered position. Pressing down on top is also exceptionally useful as it means you can tap center tall pots like this without simply tipping them over, which is what would happen if you only used one hand, but with a finger firmly on top and taps focused near the rim of the pot. With some practice, it's pretty easy to do this, which is wonderfully useful for when I'm waxing pots of this shape. Next, let's move on to wheel speed. I think a pretty good standard is about one rotation a second. So if you make a small scratch in the base like so, and then One, spin the wheel, making sure the scratch lands where your finger is every second. This makes for a pretty good speed to tap center. And just like when throwing pots, if you spin the wheel too quickly, you end up just making the process more difficult than it need be. Like you can see here, this is a real struggle. It is possible, but it's also about 10 times harder initially, and the chance that your pot will just fly off into the wheel tray is far greater. <laughs> Equally, if you go too slow, whilst you probably won't destroy any of your pots, you will simply make the process far slower than it need be. And as tap centering is all about making your workflow more efficient, going at this rate, whilst okay for practicing, is too slow for general production. Now, this may just be my opinion, but there are many tap centering tutorials that talk about finding the rhythm and also counting the rhythm as you tap center in order to help. And whilst this will probably work for some people, I think for others it can just really overcomplicate the process as you have to not only tap the pot to center it, but also count the rhythm at the same time. And I have tried this, but as a beginner, when you're learning something on the wheel, you're really thinking intently about the process itself. You're thinking about the wheel speed, when to tap, where to position your hand, and so on. So to introduce another element onto this, if you aren't already quite a confident potter, can just make it all a bit too much, I think. And instead of counting out a rhythm and relying on a beat, like this, I suppose. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. I feel like it's easier to tell when it's centered by looking at it and tapping it when you feel confident that you're knocking it in the right direction by observing how the rim moves on the wheel head in relation to the lines. If you miss a beat, it doesn't matter. You can simply wait for another rotation. You clock when the bowl is closest to your hand and that's when you tap. And I think that your ultimate goal when learning how to tap center is for it to become relatively subconscious. And so I think the touch method works a bit better if you are just starting out. Then you can move on to identifying when it's centered totally by eye. And then from that point, it will gradually become almost completely subconscious. When I'm tap centering, I don't think about the rhythm. I don't think about when to tap it. I simply whack the pot until it spins in the middle. And this brings me on to the last tip, really. Whilst I do think it's useful to practice on leather hard pots, as they're typically the objects you'll tap center the most of, and they do act differently compared to other things, as the leather hard clay is slightly sticky. If you don't have any leather hard pots to hand, you can try this with literally anything as long as it's round. You'll find it's better to practice with heavier objects. You can even take something like an empty can and stuff it full of clay. But I wouldn't recommend using finished, fired pots, especially if you're just beginning how to learn to tap center. And once mastered, this skill is really versatile and very useful. You can even do it on a banding wheel, spun by hand, which I do all the time when I'm coating oxides onto pots I want to salvage with a second firing.
You can also tap centre pots this way up, but in this instance you don't want to strike near the top as there's nothing really supporting the walls up there, and you'll simply distort its shape, so instead I centre the bowl by hitting the bottom, where the thick expansive clay in the base is much stronger. Now here's a slightly advanced technique, but since this rim is raised above the wheel head, I can't easily use the lines on it as a reference to see when it's centred or not, but you still can actually in a way. In instances like this when I'm centering the rim of the pot, I position my head and keep it steady, and I use one of the lines as a reference in the back for the rim in the front. When the bowl is off centre, you can easily see that it moves around, covering up the line in places, so when I tap centre, I watch very carefully for the moment where the rim no longer distorts the shape of the reference behind it, and at that point, I use my left hand to push down inside the vessel to pin it in place. This is again really quite a subconscious act, but when I sat down to film all of this footage the other day, I really thought intently about what it is I do and how it is I see pots to notice when they're centred, and this is actually how I do it most of the time, and I guess this is what I was speaking about earlier. This is being able to centre by eye. The tapping doesn't really mean anything, it's a way of getting it into the middle, but I'm not using it as a means of making my final decision as to when the pot is actually centred, and that final choice is actually just done by eye. In a practical sense, tap centering is something I utilise all the time when trimming. I use it at the start if I need to trim the inside to add a detail to the rim. It's used again when the pot is sliced off and placed upside down. My eye keenly watching the rim to see when it's spinning true. I even tap centre my spinner sometimes, as it just makes holding onto it a bit easier and it's used at the very end, in this moment, when I want to centre the vessel to burnish the rim, and in this case I'm not centering the bat, but the rim above it. Tap centering is also useful for when you're centering pots on top of chucks. These devices hold the pots in place as you turn them, but the pots still have to be centred before they can be finished, but again I'm more or less doing everything exactly the same, I'm pushing down from on top, and I'm tapping the cup whenever I see that it's spinning out of centre, at 3 o'clock, every time. And that's, I think, everything I know about tap centering. The only connection this skill has to learning how to ride a bike is that the best way to do it is through practice. Good tuition helps, but you've got to put in the hours, otherwise it'll never happen. So, good luck from me to you, and thank you so much for taking your time to watch. I really hope you found this video helpful, and if it was, do let me know in the comments. I read every single one.